So there seems to be a misconception um, that among carnists uh, who, carnists I define as someone who defends eating meat and actually uh, justifies it through a variety of means, um, saying it's necessary for the human body, um, you know, animals are just here for us to eat, um, God said in the Bible after the, I mean, there's so many justifications that carnists use to continue with eating murdered sentient beings. And those people are um, folks that I would like to try to educate. And I don't want to see them as my enemy, but I see animals as my friends. And if you are um, trying to justify murdering my friends, I tend to see you as the, as the enemy. But uh, the vegan uh, lifestyle is about unity, compassion, and love. So uh, instead of seeing Karnas as the enemy, I will see them as needing education. And that's not coming from um, any sort of moral high ground or holier than thou. It's about the truth. It's about finding the truth that they seem to not want to really find. <laughs> um, I ate meat for years, my most, mo most of my life, just because it was normal and culture and all that. Until I actually watched Slaughterhouse footage and, and researched and educated myself. And I'm the kind of person that I don't stick to preconceived belief systems or, or indoctrinated cultural belief systems or any sort of things that are programmed in my brain I don't stick with them if they don't make sense morally and, um, you know, logically. <laughs> and um, so there's, a, there's a, a, a preconceived notion. There's an Oregon artist who I like, uh, who has posted previously on his highlights that it's just what they're processing the meat with and all these illnesses and diseases we have. Um, are, are just because of everything they're putting in. And so you'll see this a lot in carnist circles is that it's just what they're processing it with. Flesh on its own is, is good for us and healthy and needed and more accessible and more bioavailable and all these things. And, and what I would want them to understand is, first of all, peer-reviewed science has found that red meat, which is not just cow flesh, but it's tons of other flesh is carcinogenic and that's without processing. Now processing we know is class one, class two is red meat. Okay. And red meat is pretty much every kind of meat that the, at least Americans eat. Okay. So beyond that, you, you first have to understand it's flesh in general that is carcinogenic and has loads of saturated fat and dietary cholesterol, which you don't need. Healthy fats are not animal products that are gonna give you artery plaque and inflammation immediately. And that is a fact, that's what they do. If your body creates inflammation immediately, it's your body's way of saying that this is a foreign invader and this isn't good for me. Your body always knows best. Now with, uh, oh, you know, the heme iron in meat is more bioavailable. Uh, okay, yeah, that is a fact. Non-heme iron is in plants and it's less bioavailable. However, all you need to do is supplement the non-heme iron plant protein with vitamin C. Vitamin C allows your body to absorb the non-heme iron. Problem solved. So, so heme iron has been shown to be correlated with heart disease. Um, and so you, that's what you'll, you'll see all these carnist excuses that, you know, oh, meat's more bioavailable just because of the heme iron. Well, you can get a healthier form of iron, non-heme iron, that doesn't lead to heart disease. And all you gotta do to assimilate it is, is get vitamin C. So drink some pineapple juice, some orange juice, you know? Um, 
plants have all that we need and uh, you, your body makes all the cholesterol it needs naturally. So you don't need any sort of dietary cholesterol. That's why you have meat eaters with high cholesterol. And, uh, and the saturated fat is not healthy. You wanna get your fats from nuts and seeds, okay? And there's TMAO, there's a plethora of other things that are found in dead, decaying flesh that has nothing to do with the processing component of it. The processing will make it worse, absolutely, but it's the flesh on its own that carnists need to understand, better comprehend, that is what it's making it unhealthy for the human body, is the actual flesh itself. And uh, I don't understand why it's so hard for people to get that. Because re really, the only, the only excuse to keep eating meat in this, day of in this age of information is if you say, because we know it's bad for the environment, we know it's bad for the animals, we know it's, uh, I think most of us know it leads to, to disease, increased risk of disease, but the only way carnists can really justify eating flesh is that they say they, they need it and it's good for their body and they need it. I don't feel good if I don't have my meat, right? So that's, they're on their last leg of trying to justify this, this uh, uh, culturally ingrained habit. And, and, um, and so that's where you find carnists at. So you have whole pages uh, dedicating themselves to, uh, uh, you know, saving the plants. And now they're, everyone's a plant activist and plants have feelings and meat is necessary for my body and, and hyper carnivore. I mean, just instead of accepting the information and changing, you have people going the opposite direction, trying to look for ways to justify this behavior. And, um, I find it sad, but this is uh, this is this is also what motivates me to continue posting uh, and educating. Um, there's, I, I mean, I could list so many reasons to not eat flesh. I don't, I don't even know where to start, really. I mean, if you want to extend your lifespan, and premature aging, erectile dysfunction, and prevent cancer, uh, <laughs> you'll you'll stick with plants, and uh, you know, it's just. It's overwhelming the amount of information that's going through my head right now uh, where I, it's just like, pick your, pick your poison. Where do you want me to start meat eaters? But the main thing I wanted to just get across in this video was that it's not just the, the processing of the flesh, but if you think about it, flesh needs to be, it's decaying. It's dead. It's dead. Anything that's dead needs to be processed. You know, they put carbon monoxide on it to make it look more red and fresh. Otherwise, it'd be brown looking. Who's going to buy brown? That's what it looks like naturally. So if you're a natural omnivore and, uh, you know, you go around killing animals and eating their flesh, their carcasses like a necrophore or a vulture, if, you, if that's what you're trying to say you are, then you should have no problem with the meat being brown, right? Because you're an omnivore. This is what you do. You just, you see roadkill on the side of the road and you get hungry and you're like, ooh, I want to go eat that. That's what an omnivore would do. You know, my dog, Mary, when she was alive, I remember seeing her in the backyard as a puppy, like um, eating a dead bird, like chewing on a dead bird. Like that's what an omnivore does. They see a dead animal, they go sniff it and they might take a bite. Um, when's the last time you saw a human being um, who saw roadkill on the side of the road and said, mm, I'm going to go take a bite. Mm. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't see that, do you? But you, you see humans who have been uh, trained to, to see themselves to not see how they have been trained into being a necrovore or flesh vulture, dead body carcass eater. We're not carcass eaters. We can, the, the human body is amazing. We can do amazing things. It could take on, uh, uh, it can eat a bunch of different things and somehow survive for a while because the body's always trying to find homeostasis and balance. Um, but the continued sustained flesh eating and dairy eating is a, a over cumulative over a lifetime it's going to catch up with you and that's why you have uh, flesh eaters in the hospital that's why you have dairy eaters uh getting prostate cancer that's why you have high blood pressure and that's why you have heart disease and cancer and, and type 2 diabetes these are all these are all from environmental factors and what you're putting in your body what you're eating it's um i think they've proven that maybe four to five percent tops is is genetic so like what you get disease wise is 
a very tiny percentage just it, it says you might get this from your genes the great percentage is from your environment and what, you, what you're putting in your body okay so if you're at, obviously if you're adding vaccines and um and uh you know you're getting chemtrailed and you're not heavy metal detoxing and then you're eating flesh on top of that you're just making things you're compounding the situation right and and you could have people who maybe they know how to heavy metal detox and maybe they know how to fast here and there they have clean distilled water and and they do all these healthy things but they eat flesh well those people are going to be able to sustain their lives a little bit better because their bodies be like well everything else is good but we got this flesh that we got to work hard to process and everything um you know maybe you have someone who doesn't eat flesh but they have they get their shots and their vaccines and then in the body produces inflammation for vaccines too it's it's when you're inflamed disease happens the, the, the greater risk of disease when you're inflamed so you know what look at what inflames you flesh dairy what creates mucus an acidic environment artery plaque inflammation vaccines and flesh and and dairy are not needed by the human body and so that's why it's going to pr produce inflammation which will always lead to disease inflammation has been shown to always increase risk of disease when you, your body's inflamed you're going to have an illness your body's fighting something okay now the body does not produce mucus and inflammation and create an acidic environment ripe for cancer cell, cancer cells to grow and the uh, and how all these hormones and the increase in igf1 in insulin growth factor one your body does not produce all these stuff with whole organic plant foods they, it just doesn't <laughs> um and so the the plant foods as 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 found in in uh in the china study actually has a way to turn off cancer growth uh it has does the opposite so you know carnis you, you're really running out of excuses and and if uh if it makes you feel good to eat flesh despite seeing car uh slaughterhouse footage of what those animals go through and what that flesh went through to get on your plate if, if you still say oh yeah i feel better well guess what that's because your parasites in your in your stomach they love that flesh they love that flesh and when your parasites are having a feeding frenzy it's going to give you sensations of feeling good and you know you might get some energy and stuff but you're going to have increased igf1 and so you see these guys at the gym where i'm going right now with big muscle swollen insulin growth factor one is increased so you're you're your growth it's like human it's like growth hormone your body's gonna be able to grow and get buff so are your cancer cells 